Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna learn about position, velocity, and acceleration. Let's start by looking at an overview of how these are related. The derivative of a position function is a velocity function, and the derivative of a velocity function is an acceleration function. Let's take a look at why this works. Here we have a graph of a position function called s of t. Note that the units on the y-axis are feet and the units on the x-axis are seconds. Let's first take a look at how this graph works. This is a graph of a position function, so it's illustrating the position of a certain object as it moves through time. Let's just say for fun that this function represents the position of a horse from a fence. At t equals zero, the horse is approximately 60 feet from the fence. Between t equals one and two, the horse reaches its farthest current distance from the fence. This corresponds to a local maximum on the function. Then the horse starts moving back towards the fence and between t equals five and six, the horse is touching the fence because its position is zero feet from the fence. Then the horse moves away from the fence. Now let's find the average rate of change on an interval. What we're doing here is finding the slope of a secant line. When we do this, we get the change in position over the change in time and the units are feet per second. The change in position over the change in time is also known as the average velocity. Now, if we find the instantaneous rate of change at a point on the function, in other words, the slope of the tangent line, we would be finding the instantaneous change in position over the instantaneous change in time, which is the instantaneous velocity. And this is ds dt, which in this case also has units of feet per second. In summary, the derivative of position is velocity. Now, if we graph the derivative of the position function, we'll get the velocity function shown here. Note that the units on the y-axis are feet per second and the units on the x-axis are seconds. Let's go back to the horse example and see how this velocity function works. Here, we can see that the velocity is positive, but it's decreasing and eventually reaches zero. A positive velocity means that the horse was moving in the positive direction, which is often considered to be to the right. Then the velocity is negative, meaning that the horse is moving in the opposite direction. Somewhere between three and four, the horse reaches its most negative velocity. Then the velocity gets less negative until it hits zero again. Finally, the velocity is positive, meaning the horse is moving in the positive direction once again. Now, if we find the average rate of change over an interval on the velocity function, in other words, the slope of a secant line, we'll get the change in velocity over the change in time. And this is the average acceleration. Note that the units are feet per second squared. Now, if we find the instantaneous rate of change at a single point on the function, we'll get the instantaneous change in velocity over the instantaneous change in time and that is the instantaneous acceleration, dv dt, and the units are feet per second squared. So in summary, we can say that the derivative of velocity is acceleration. Here's a graph of the position, velocity, and acceleration functions. As you can see, the velocity graph is the derivative of the position function. Note that the maxima and minima of the position function correspond to zeros on the velocity function. The linear function shown here is the acceleration function, and that's the derivative of the velocity function. Note that the minimum on the velocity function corresponds to a zero on the acceleration function. Take a moment and convince yourself that the graph of the velocity function is the derivative of the position function, and the graph of the acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function. Now, let's look at some common notation for position, velocity, and acceleration functions. For this example, let's call position s of t. But remember, the letter name of the function might be different depending on the problem. Now we have velocity, which we'll call v of t. But since velocity is the derivative of the position function, it can also be called s prime of t or ds dt. Now let's call acceleration a of t. 
But remember, acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, so we can call it v prime of t, or dv dt. But acceleration is also the second derivative of position, so we can also call it s double prime of t, or d squared s over dt squared. Now, let's do an analysis with the signs of velocity and acceleration. This will help you develop an intuitive understanding that you can rely on to help you better visualize motion. Suppose that the velocity and acceleration of a horse are both positive. That would mean that the horse is speeding up in the positive direction, speeding up while moving to the right. But if the velocity of the horse is positive and the acceleration is zero, that would mean that the horse is just moving forward at a constant rate. In other words, moving to the right at a constant rate. Now suppose that the velocity of the horse is negative and the acceleration is zero. That would mean that the horse is moving at a constant rate in the negative direction, to the left. But if the velocity and acceleration are both negative, that would mean the horse is speeding up in the negative direction, speeding up to the left. So now let's think about this case. What if the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative? That would mean that the horse is slowing down in the positive direction. In other words, it's moving to the right but slowing down. And finally, what if the velocity is negative but the acceleration is positive? That would mean that the horse is moving in the negative direction but slowing down. In other words, it's moving to the left but slowing down. So let's summarize here. In order for the horse to speed up, V of T and A of T have to have the same signs. In order for the horse to slow down, V of T and A of T have opposite signs. In the next video, we'll apply these concepts in the context of a problem. For now, make sure that you understand that the derivative of position is velocity, and the derivative of velocity is acceleration. Make sure that you're familiar with various notations for position, velocity, and acceleration. And make sure you understand how to determine whether an object speeds up or slows down. And that's how you rock calculus!